One of the most iconic moments in SpaceX history was the simultaneous landing of two Falcon Heavy side boosters. On February 6, 2018, the rocket made its spectacular debut, showcasing immense power and engineering precision. However, despite this incredible debut, between June 2019 and November 2022, not a single Falcon Heavy mission took place. The rocket, which had captured global attention, seemed to vanish for a while. So, what happened? First, one big reason is Starship. When Falcon Heavy was first introduced, it was seen as the rocket that might one day take people to Mars. But even in those early days, Elon Musk made it clear that SpaceX was already looking ahead to something much bigger, what was then called the BFR, Big Falcon Rocket, now known as Starship. Musk stated that even if Falcon Heavy performed flawlessly, SpaceX would not pursue crewed flight certification for it. That process, which involves extensive federal oversight and rigorous testing to ensure safety and reliability, was deemed unnecessary in light of Starship's potential. As a result, any future role Falcon Heavy might have had in carrying astronauts was effectively sidelined. SpaceX also quietly dropped earlier plans to use Falcon Heavy and a Dragon capsule to fly two private passengers around the moon. That idea was shelved in favor of using Starship instead. Honestly, even back then it made sense. If Starship works the way SpaceX hopes, it's a total game changer. It's designed to carry up to 100 people on deep space missions, haul huge amounts of cargo, help build a moon base, and even make point-to-point -point travel on Earth possible. It's fully reusable, super powerful, and basically the centerpiece of everything SpaceX wants to do in the future. In the near term, SpaceX continues to provide cargo and crew transportation to the International Space Station, support private missions like those from Axiom Space or Jared Isaacman's Inspiration4, and launch Starlink satellites and commercial payloads aboard its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. These services generate crucial revenue, which is helping to fund the development of Starship. But for now, Starship still isn't operational, and Falcon Heavy is actually a pretty solid rocket. In fact, maybe it's a little too good. Falcon Heavy is basically a beefed-up version of the Falcon 9. It uses a reinforced Falcon 9 as the center core with two more Falcon 9 first stages strapped on the sides as boosters, each topped with a nose cone for better aerodynamics. The setup is kind of like what you see with the Delta IV Heavy, or what was proposed for the Atlas V Heavy and Russia's Angra A 5E MV. On top of the three-core booster, it uses the regular Falcon 9 second stage to carry the payload inside a protective fairing. The Falcon Heavy's first stage is made up of three Falcon 9 boosters side by side, each with nine Merlin 1D engines. That's 27 engines total. At liftoff, they crank out a massive 22.82 meganewtons of thrust at sea level, which increases to about 24.68 meganewtons as it climbs higher into the atmosphere. The upper stage uses a single Merlin 1D engine that's been modified for space with a vacuum-optimized nozzle and a burn time of around 397 seconds. When the rocket launches, the center core briefly runs at full power, then throttles down to save fuel. After the side boosters separate, it throttles back up to max power. Each of the three cores uses SpaceX's OctaWeb engine layout, which makes manufacturing simpler, and they all come with four landing legs. To steer themselves back to Earth, each booster has four grid fins that pop out after separation. Right after the side boosters peel off, a few of their engines keep firing to guide them safely away from the rocket. Then the fins deploy. The boosters flip around and head back for landing. In reusable missions, the side boosters land gently on solid ground, while the center core lands on a drone ship out at sea. If the boosters aren't being recovered, SpaceX skips the grid fins and legs. The landing legs themselves are lightweight but strong, made from carbon fiber with an aluminum honeycomb core, and they fold out just before landing. Falcon Heavy is the second most powerful rocket in operation today. 
able to haul up to 63,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit, 26,700 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit, and 16,800 kilograms all the way to Mars. It was built with crewed missions in mind right from the start, designed to meet or beat all the safety standards needed for human spaceflight. In fact, its structure can handle 40% more stress than it experiences during flight, well above the typical 25% safety margin on other rockets. Falcon Heavy opens the door to future missions that could send astronauts back to the moon or even onto Mars. So with all that power and potential, I still don't understand why Falcon Heavy isn't used more often. Well, that's exactly the problem. Falcon Heavy isn't just good, it's almost too good for most missions. From a value standpoint, a Falcon 9 launch runs about 62 million, while a Falcon Heavy launch can go up to 90 million. On paper, Falcon Heavy sounds like a way better deal. It only costs about 1.5 times more, but can carry almost three times the payload. Pretty impressive, right? But the thing is, most satellite customers don't actually need that much power. Falcon Heavy can haul up to 70 tons to low Earth orbit, which is massive, but kind of overkill for most commercial missions. As space analyst Phil Smith once said, the bigger vehicles, really, it's the government that needs those. Meanwhile, Falcon 9 ended up being way more successful than anyone expected. After its debut, SpaceX kept tweaking it making it better and more powerful over time. When they were working on Falcon Heavy, they weren't entirely sure how far Falcon 9 could go. But it turns out that Falcon 9 got so good that a bunch of missions originally meant for Falcon Heavy got switched over to Falcon 9 instead. Most commercial customers just didn't need the Heavy's massive lifting power. There's also this unofficial rule in the space world. A rocket needs at least 10 successful launches in a row before it's considered reliable for government use. Falcon 9 hit that milestone early and kept going strong, while Falcon Heavy, since it flies way less often, took longer to build that same kind of trust. Of course, not every payload is a small satellite. Some missions still require heavier payloads that necessitate the use of Falcon Heavy. However, it is important to note that the payload volume is identical between Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, as both use the same payload fairings. This means Falcon Heavy does not offer any additional volume capacity. The main reasons a customer would opt for Falcon Heavy over Falcon 9 are either to launch a very dense payload that exceeds Falcon 9's capabilities, which is relatively rare, or to send a payload much farther into space, such as to a geostationary transfer orbit. While Falcon 9 can carry up to 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit, Falcon Heavy can carry that same mass and more to much higher orbits, making it ideal for high-energy missions. A prime example is the Europa Clipper mission. Europa Clipper is one of NASA's most expensive science missions to date, with a total estimated life cycle cost of $5.2 billion, including four years of operations after its arrival at Jupiter in 2030. It was designated a top priority among flagship class planetary science missions in multiple decadal surveys. Building on more than two decades of interest in missions to explore Europa through orbiters or flybys, Launching the Europa Clipper required a powerful vehicle capable of placing it on a trajectory to Jupiter, which demands significantly more energy than a typical mission to geostationary orbit or low Earth orbit. To meet these requirements, SpaceX modified Falcon Heavy by removing recovery hardware and using all available propellant, optimizing it for this high-energy deep space mission. While expensive, one-off science and military missions do not launch as frequently as commercial telecom satellites, they still require reliable launch options on a fairly regular basis. For example, NASA's $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope was launched on December 25, 2021, aboard an Ariane 5 rocket. That same vehicle has completed two missions in the next year. Clearly, the limited use of Falcon Heavy cannot be explained by lack of demand alone. The real reasons are more complex and often stem from factors outside of SpaceX's control, including delays caused by payload readiness. Take the USSF-44 mission, for instance. It was originally scheduled for launch in late 2020, 
but payload issues delayed it significantly. Delays have also occurred on SpaceX's side, which is not surprising given the complexity of developing a heavy lift rocket. Falcon Heavy was first announced by Elon Musk in 2011 with an initial launch target of 2013. Even doubling that timeline to account for development challenges, a reasonable expectation would have placed the first flight around late 2015. However, that did not materialize. Despite SpaceX's rapid progress, major setbacks with Falcon 9 in 2015 and 2016, such as launch failures, took precedence as Falcon 9 flights represent a significant portion of the company's revenue. Ensuring reliability and customer confidence in Falcon 9 became the top priority, which inevitably pushed back Falcon Heavy's debut to 2017. Following a few more expected delays, the first Falcon Heavy launch finally took place on February 6, 2018. Notably, SpaceX has yet to fly its very first Falcon Heavy contract. In May 2012, Intelsat became the first customer to book a Falcon Heavy launch, but the company filed for bankruptcy before the mission could take place. These kinds of delays, whether technical or due to shifting market conditions, often lead customers to lose interest, seek alternative launch providers, or, in some cases, go out of business entirely. But there is a bright side. Falcon Heavy is slowly making a comeback. In 2023, it launched more frequently than ever before, completing five missions that year, averaging a launch every few months. The first launch of 2023 was U.S. SF-67 in mid-January. This mission used a new center core in an expendable configuration, meaning it had no grid fins or landing legs, while the two reused side boosters successfully landed at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The next mission was the launch of Viasat-3. Originally, Falcon Heavy was slated to carry the Viasat-2 satellite, but due to delays, that payload was ultimately launched on an Ariane 5. However, Viasat retained its contract with SpaceX, and its next K-band satellite, designed to serve the Americas, was successfully launched aboard Falcon Heavy. The upper stage also deployed two additional payloads, G-Space-1 and Arcturus. Like previous missions, this flight featured a thermal gray band on the second stage. The remaining three Falcon Heavy launches of 2023 included Jupiter-3, NASA's Psyche mission, and Boeing's X-37B space plane. All were successfully completed with their payloads deployed as intended. Looking ahead, Falcon Heavy is scheduled for several high-profile missions. In 2025, it is expected to launch the Power and Propulsion Element, PPEE, and the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, HALO, both foundational modules of NASA's Gateway Lunar Space Station. As NASA describes it, the Gateway will be the first long-term orbiting outpost around the Moon and a key part of supporting sustainable astronaut missions under the Artemis program. Originally planned as two separate launches, PPE and HALO will now be launched together aboard a single Falcon Heavy. NASA states that the combined launch from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A will cost approximately $331.8 million, including the launch service and related mission expenses. While the original launch date was set for no earlier than May 2024, it has since been delayed, though the overall mission plan remains unchanged. Beyond these, Falcon Heavy has more than 10 missions currently scheduled through 2029, promising a busy and exciting future for the rocket in the years ahead.